Question number three, Chris Hipkins. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister of Education, does she stand by all of her decisions and statements as Minister of Education? Surely not. Honourable Hekia Parata. Mr Speaker, yes, in all the circumstances they were made. <laughs> Supplementary question, Chris Hipkins. Supplementary. Is she satisfied that she allowed sufficient time for Phillipstown School Board of Trustees to undertake meaningful consultation with their community on her proposal to merge them with Wollstone School, following the court's declaration that her original decision was unlawful? If so, why? Honourable Hickey Parata. Mr Speaker, yes. Um, following the judgment made by Justice Fogarty, who had said that the Crown had consulted in good faith, but that there had been one inadvertent error in relation to property costings, and that continued consultation on that particular element should be considered, I then wrote to Phillipstown and Wollstone and suggested that we would continue consultation, how and when we would do that, and invited their feedback. On the basis of that, we began and continued consultation on the 18th of November. That concluded on the 4th of March. That was a further 10-week consultation process, uh, absent the holiday period that occurred in the middle of that, during which time several boxes of information have been provided to both Phillipstown and Woolston, and there have been uh, officials available to answer their questions. Supplementary question, Chris Hipkins. What alternative proposal to a merger with Wollstown School did the Phillipstown School Board suggest in their 6th of March letter to her titled Response to Minister on Continuing Consultation Process? Honourable Hickey Parata. Mr Speaker, over the course of the consultation, there were a number of discussions with Phillipstown, um, and it included that uh, no further action be taken for a two-year period, at the end of which time a review should occur. It included that the school just continue as is without any kind of merger, and it made a number of suggestions around that. Supplementary question, Dr Megan Woods. On what date did her official meet with the Phillipstown Board to address outstanding questions around property information and what follow-up actions did her official agree to as a consequence of this meeting? Honourable Hickey Parata. Mr Speaker, officials have been meeting with the Phillipstown Principal and Board on several occasions since the 18th of November through to the conclusion of the consultation period uh, originally on the 3rd of March, but at the request of Phillipstown on the 4th of March. I don't know which specific meeting the member is referring to or which specific follow-up action in the context of those numbers of meetings. Point of order, Dr Megan Wood. Um, I seek leave to table a letter from the Minister to Phillipstown School referring to her officials' order. meeting leave, on leave the, 20, the 28th of February to, uh, to address property leave, information follow-up Leave us sort to table that particular letter from the Minister to the school. Is there any objection? There appears to be none. Supplementary question, Dr Megan Woods. Does she consider that the six days between the 28th, the 28th of February meeting, when she received further information, when the school received further information regarding their property, and her 6th of March deadline, sufficient time for them to take independent expert advice on that information, disseminate that information to parents, and receive their feedback in order to make a meaningful submission on the proposal? If so, why? Honourable Hickey Parata. Mr Speaker, as I've already indicated, when the decision was made to continue consultation, I invited both boards to give me feedback on how they wanted that consultation to proceed. They were given 10 weeks from the 18th of November Order. until the 3rd of March, and if the board had questions to raise, they had all of that period to do so. Supplementary question, Chris Hipkins. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Why, after having her initial decision to merge Phillipstown and Wollstone schools declared unlawful by the courts, and after the community have loudly and clearly rejected that proposal, does she intend to force this change on that local community, ignoring all of their feedback? 
Um, Mr Speaker, I think it's really important to recall here that there are two schools involved in this process. Woolston also consulted their community and had a 91 per cent response, and they are keen for the merger to proceed. In the case of Phillipstown, there are those that don't. But on the basis that we have been focused on investing in better provision across the Greater Christchurch network, and that's involved an investment of $1.137 billion into the community. It is for better provision, not simply repair. Question number four, Mark Mitchell. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the uh, Minister of